Good afternoon. My name is Jennifer Harmoning, President of the Burnsville Chamber of Commerce. We're here today for our next candidate forum for State House District 56B. I'd like to introduce Brady Folkstead, our moderator for today's forum. Take it away, Brady. Thanks, Jennifer. Yes, I'm Brady Folkstead. I am the chair of the Public Policy Committee for the Burnsville Chamber of Commerce. Thank you all for joining us today, uh, both on Facebook and on YouTube this afternoon. Today we have House District 56B, which is an open district. Uh, the incumbent is not running. Uh, for those of you in Burnsville, it's essentially everything south of 13 and east of 35W, as well as uh, southern and uh, central Burnsville and a little bit of northwestern uh, Lakeville as well. Today we have two candidates joining us for the seat in 56B. We have Roz Peterson, the endorsed candidate from the GOP side, and we have Kayla Berg from the endorsement of the DFL side of things. Just a little bit of housekeeping. The candidates, so everybody knows the candidates did receive the questions in advance of today's forum. We'll be going through and there are five questions. Uh, the first introduction, they'll each have two minutes and then the follow-up questions, they'll have one minute each to respond. As we go through, I'm also doing the timing. So if you're keeping track of that at home as well, uh, when the candidate is free to speak, my background will be green. In the last 15 seconds of their time, it turns yellow. And then when their time has concluded, it is red. Uh, before we began, uh, we did flip a coin. And with that, uh, to kick things off, the first question will go to Kayla, and the second question then will be started off by Roz. But first question, uh, Kayla, could you take a moment to introduce yourself and tell us what motivated you to run for office? Of course. Well, good afternoon, and thank you, Jennifer and Brady, for hosting this forum and for keeping us all safe by having it on Zoom. And thank you all who are joining via Facebook Live. My name is Kayla Berg, and I'm running for the State House seat here in 56B because representation matters. I'm a working mom who's passionate about a Minnesota that works for working families. I raised my two sons here in the district where they've attended Burnsville Public Schools, and we are proud to call Burnsville home. 17 years ago, I became a flight attendant and joined my union. And a spark was ignited in me that became a fire in my belly for advocating for the issues that affect working families, that affect all of our families. I have spent the last decade and a half serving the members of my union and fighting for a better life for working families. But behind every issue that we talk about is a story. The story of a single mom who is unable to make ends meet, or a family drowning in grief and medical debt after the loss of a loved one because they couldn't afford preventative care. A child that got overlooked in an education system that has failed so many of our students instead of creating pathways to a bright future for all of our children. I will never lose sight of these stories, the struggles and triumphs of the families in our district. Our families need bold leaders with the courage and integrity to stand for what's right in the face of economic, racial, and environmental injustice. I am that leader and I'm ready to take my experience as a mom who knows what it's like to struggle to provide for my family, my experience as a nonprofit director and coalition builder, and my many years spent as a labor leader to St. Paul to continue fighting for a more just and equitable Minnesota. Thank you very much, Kayla. And Roz, the same question goes to you. Tell us a little, a little bit about yourself and what motivated you to run for office. Thanks, Brady and Jennifer, and thank you for the Burnsville Chamber for hosting this event. My name is Roz Peterson, and I've been married to my husband, Tim, for 33 years, and we have two grown children who attended Lakeville Public Schools and have graduated from college. Yay! And uh, I met my husband, Tim, on a blind date at Gustavus Adolphus College, where I majored in business management and psychology. I graduated early and got married and opened Lakeville Snyder Drug. Now I'm in the commercial real estate business and a realtor with Sarong Commercial Properties. I have served two terms in the legislature and eight years on Lakeville School Board. I've been an active member in this community and a member of Hosanna Church. 
While in the legislature, I served as assistant majority leader as well as vice chair of health and human services and child care committees. I earned awards for the work I did for the people with disabilities, early learning and education, healthcare, transportation, taxes, housing, small business, and community leadership. You can learn more on my website at rozpeterson.com. I'm running because I felt not all voices were being heard at the Capitol. I believe that our government should work for you, not the other way around. There needs to be balance in St. Paul and the executive branch is simply too powerful without some checks from the legislature. During these unprecedented times and a projected $4.7 billion deficit, we need experience and creative solutions to help move us forward Jump start the economy and get things back on track. I listen to all sides and look for common ground to find win-win solutions for all Minnesotans. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Roz, as well. Thank you both. Thanks for letting us know a little bit about you each individually here. Coming into the first question that we have, and it's been touched on by both of you. Burnsville businesses are facing unprecedented times and uncertainty due to both COVID-19 and the current uh, civil unrest. Will you support efforts to keep businesses open and or what sort of financial assistance for businesses would you support? This question will go to Roz first. Roz, go ahead. Thanks, Brady. The pandemic has certainly affected my business and things would have been a lot worse if it hadn't been for federal funds to help us through the initial shutdown. Businesses cannot survive without continued, uh, with the continued uncertainty and increased regulations. Most restaurants will fail if they haven't already, if things don't change. I value freedom and personal responsibility. The only way to improve our economy and slow the state's growing budget deficit is for our businesses to be open. I believe it is a core government function to protect our property when violence ensues, not wait for days before taking action and more property is destroyed. If our governor decides to continue to or further restrict businesses from operating with more mandates, I believe that is a form of eminent domain and the government should compensate for those losses. I personally understand what is at stake, so I will continue efforts to advocate for their survival. Thank you very much. And Kayla, same question for you. Will you support efforts to keep businesses open and or what sort of financial assistance would you offer businesses during these times? Thank you, Brady. I know that we are all struggling with how uncertain life feels right now. As an essential worker during this pandemic, I have seen the progression from not understanding the severity of COVID-19 to then scrambling to protect workers in our communities because of the lack of information and leadership by our current administration. The best way to ensure our small businesses remain viable is to follow the science-based safety guidelines that our governor and the Minnesota Department of Health have put forward like the mask mandate so that we can safely and fully open up our economy for long-term success. When I'm elected, I will work to continue finding sensible economic solutions like passing the bonding bill, state-sponsored small business loans, and continued unemployment for those most affected by COVID as we work towards a robust post-pandemic economy. Thank you very much. Next question, and this is uh, critical to us, and it's also as a Burnsville business community, and it's also within uh, House District 56B. One of the most critical issues for our community is the future of the Burnsville Center. The city of Burnsville has requested tax increment financing for this area and has been denied in the last two legislative sessions. Will you support this effort this session? And what can you do to garner support to get this passed? Kayla, this question will go to you first. Great, so we have a really exciting opportunity to create good jobs right here in our community to transform this space. We can build much needed affordable housing, create new and safe paths for bikes and pedestrians, revitalize commerce and provide a welcoming area for the whole community to come together and enjoy. 
I have discussed the TIF bill that Representative Hunter Cantrell carried this session with House members and other local leaders, and there is great support for it in the House. I will continue to build a coalition to support this measure once elected, and as a resident of Burnsville, I am thrilled to be able to work with Mayor Couts to bring this to fruition for our entire community. Okay, thank you. And Ross, uh, coming over to you. Uh, tax increment financing for the Burnsville Center area. How do you feel about that one? Absolutely. As a commercial realtor, we have been seeing the need to redevelop shopping malls for quite some time. Burnsville Mall hasn't been without challenges, however, due to multiple owners and now recent default. There are lots of opportunities to revitalize this area, like Kayla was mentioning. Mixed use, how, like housing and entertainment and shopping options are just some of the possibilities, and TIF can be a useful tool in the toolbox to help redevelop this property. If elected, I will work with all stakeholders to get the job done just like I have in the past. However, there are lots of developers actually looking for sites like this and you may not need to wait for TIF to get something going. I'd, I'd recommend cleaning up the ownership and bank issues um, that need resolving first and getting it through the legislature continues to be the problem, then I would work with the development community, community to figure another way out. Thank you, thank you both. Uh, this question will go to Roz first. Uh, the city of Burnsville has been home to three landfills serving the state of Minnesota for several decades. There's currently a plan to dig up the two closed sites and consolidate them into the one site that's still open. Do you support this dig and haul plan? If, if so, why? And if not, also, why not? And if you support this, how are you able to help us get the plan approved and funded? Roz, we'll go to you first. When I was in the legislature, I was able to indemnify schools, cities, and businesses from paying for the cleanup of these landfills and secure $3 million in design and investigate possible solutions to develop this very important corridor. The Minnesota Pollution Control Agency, or MPCA, plans to build a large green pyramid, an 850-foot garbage pile that that would be the first thing you would see when you cross the Minnesota River into Burnsville. This is not what our local officials support, however, uh, they are powerless to the MPCA state agency. I support the dig and haul option that will allow this crucial land to be redeveloped instead. I passed legislation to move it forward, but unfortunately Governor Dayton vetoed it at the time. With a new governor, though, I'm hopeful that we'll be able to work with the MPCA to agree to the plan that makes the most sense for our community. Thank you. And Kayla, have you, have you thought much about the three landfills and the dig and haul plan? And what can we do if you support that to get that passed this session? Sure. So yes, I support the dig and move plan. I have worked at the intersection of the environmental and labor movements professionally and have well-established relationships and the credibility to be able to work with entities like the MPCA on this issue. I will be able to call upon our labor leaders and other legislators to ensure this passage of a bonding bill to fund this work. All the players are on board, and yet after two terms in the State House, my opponent hasn't been able to make progress on this critical issue. We can't afford to have the debris from these two landfills fill the Minnesota River and poison not only the water here in our district, but everyone downstream. It's time for a leader who can take this across the finish line. Thank you. And Next question. Uh, this, is, this has been critical and uh, has been slowly becoming more and more critical throughout uh, 2020 here. Safety is a top concern for businesses across the state. And now this question is going to go to Kayla first. Where do you stand on defunding the police? Sure. So we can all agree that we want to feel safe in our communities. Defunding the police is intentionally inflammatory language hoping to create fear of the complete destruction of public safety. None of that is happening. There is no effort being put forth by the legislature that calls for anything of the sort. What we can do is foster conversations with our friends and neighbors about what feeling safe in our community looks like to them. Things like affordable housing, 
drug and alcohol treatment and mental health resources, full-time school counselors in our schools and youth engagement programs are all part of a healthy community. I support common sense efforts like increased de-escalation training for police officers and prioritizing hiring officers that live in our community and have real relationships with the people they are tasked with protecting. We need to make sure that our police are transparent and accountable like any other taxpayer funded organization. That's how we keep all of us safe. Thank you. And now over to Ross, where do you stand on defunding the police? This is clearly a really bad idea. I'm proud to say that I've been endorsed by the Minnesota Police and Peace Officers Association. For the, for the people who serve and protect us, I've got your back, including protecting your pensions from people who want to raid it for cash. And as, as Kayla mentioned, uh, she doesn't support it either, which I'm not surprised. However, the current DFL House did pass legislation allowing cities to defund police. And I'm sure many of you saw a St. Paul DFL House candidate who was verbally abusive in front of children and Hugo, who does support defunding the police. So if it is what it is, what some DFL members want. However, if our police are not serving us the way they should, I'm open to hearing those concerns and finding common ground solutions to work with our community. And I am happy that we are able to pass a bonding bill supporting the smart center that helps train police officers in those mental health crises as well. Thank you, and thank you both for your responses there. Uh, moving on to the last question here. This will go to Roz first. Why are you the best candidate to represent our area? Thanks, Roz. These are trying, unprecedented times. Experience matters if you want to be effective at the Capitol and get our priorities accomplished. I'm very concerned about the growing budget deficit and the impact that will have on our community. The legislature looks at the suburbs as a big piggy bank and the current Democrat House majority has already passed a $12 billion tax increase that was blocked by the Senate Republicans. If you value freedom, safety, strong families, a vibrant economy, low taxes and balance at the Capitol, the choice is easy. Vote Roz Peterson. If you value qualities like hard work, integrity, truth, peace and righteousness, vote Roz Peterson. I have a history of getting things done because I listen and I don't play party politics. Check out my website at rozpeterson.com. Thank you, Burnsville Chamber and listeners, and remember to vote by November 3rd. Thank you. And Kayla, for your last portion of today's program, uh, why are you the best candidate to represent our area? Thanks, Brady. I'm the best candidate to represent our ever-changing and vibrant district because the issues facing us today aren't just legislative talking points. They're my lived experience. I will fight for fully funded public schools because I know what it's like to advocate for my child through a woefully underfunded education system when I know we can do better for our students and teachers. I know what it's like to lie awake at night worrying because my family doesn't have reliable health care, and I will fight to ensure every Minnesotan has access to quality and affordable health care. I know what it's like to struggle living paycheck to paycheck, and I will never stop fighting for economic security for all of us. I will take bold and immediate action on climate change by working to build a clean energy economy that provides good jobs and protects our clean air, drinking water, and the very survival of this planet for generations to come. I know that together we can build upon a vision where every member of our district can prosper and thrive. Please go to bergforminnesota.com to learn more. Thank you and be safe. Great, thank you very both. Thank you both very much. Uh, thank you, Roz, for joining us today. Thank you, Kayla, for joining us today. Again, this was the candidate forum for the Burnsville Chamber of Commerce for House District 56B. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, Please make sure to get out and vote uh, based, on, based on how you feel uh, the candidates have done and your personal convictions. Tuesday, November 3rd is election day in Minnesota, but early voting is also open. So you can stop into your local early voting place and get that taken care of as well. Once again, thank you and thank you all for joining us for the 56B Candidate Forum. Thank you, Brady. Thank you to our candidates and thank you for all who joined us for the live stream and uh, the recording will po be posted on our YouTube page by tomorrow. Uh, 
Thank you all and have a great day.